Shalom Aleichem, Parashat Truma. So much happening in Parashat Truma. But this one will change a very commonly known perspective. You know, the menorah that everyone knows, every child knows that a menorah of the temple, and the same one, similar to the menorah that we light on Hanukkah, is this beautiful candelabra in the temple, and the Beis HaMikdash was seven branches on Hanukkah, it's eight. But the menorah generally is depicted as this beautiful curved candelabra that has curved arms, curved branches. That's not the right menorah. Will the real menorah please stand up? Says the Rambam, Maimonides, and this is a talk from the Rebbe in Parshas Truma, Book 23, Sicha 3. The Rebbe says, the Rambam, Maimonides, was the foremost halachic authority, accepted by everyone, and also Rashi supports it in his commentary. He says that the menorah, when he designed, the Rambam designed, drew out, illustrated, the menorah of the temple. And he illustrated it in something like this. The menorah had diagonally, upward diagonally branches. I'm thinking three V's. One V inside the other. Three sets of V's that will create six branches. And the central shaft would create the seventh. So the Rambam says that the menorah was not rounded. It was curved. It was not curved. It was diagonally straight. I'm going to leave a picture in the comments, God willing, soon. And uh, the question is really, why do we all have another vision of the menorah? The other version, where does that come from? So the Rebbe says, it comes from a horrible place and it should not be used. Strangely enough, this is something that the whole world does pretty much. We have this rounded, curved menorah, and the Rebbe says, don't use it. It's a challenge. The Rebbe is challenging culture, challenging common, the commonplace understanding of the menorah. And he explains as follows. He says that curved menorah, the source of it, is a poetic or artistic licensed version of the temple's menorah as depicted on the Arch of Titus. In, in Hebrew, we know him as Titus. He was the Roman emperor who destroyed the Beis HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, conquered Jerusalem. And they built an arch for him with the design of his soldiers carrying this menorah out of the temple, away from Jerusalem. Says the Rebbe, that is not the spirit of the menorah. Not only that, but on the arch itself are etched the words, the Jews are our captives. The Jews have become our slaves. What kind of spirit are we encouraging by following that menorah? Says the Rebbe, strangely enough, he urged that menorahs in schools, in schools, in classrooms, in homes, in stores, everywhere, we should not have that curved menorah, that the design that everyone knows. And he urged us to use the Rambam's, Maimonides' version of the menorah, which is the, I imagine these were six, but there are only three now. There are six branches going up on each side, diagonally this way, diagonally that way, in one central shaft. And the Rebbe says that when we use the curved menorah, we're seemingly supporting this, not aside from the historical error, but in the design, because the Rambam and Rashi says otherwise. But we're also supporting the idea that the Jews were captives, the idea of Jewish subjugation. That's the arch's portrayal is a negative one for the Jewish people, and which seeks to diminish the Jewish identity and achievement. And the Rebbe says that's not the message of the menorah. It's diametrically opposed to the message of the menorah, which is that we are a beacon of light. 
that God's presence rests among us and we are to illuminate the world with God's light. And that is the Rebbe's call. A call for action. The menorah should be uh, not the curved one, but it should be, the, it should be the, the Rambam's design. Moving on, there's another uh, another tweak. Not a tweak, but a description in the Rambam's illustration of the menorah. The menorah, the Torah says that the menorah had designs on it. There were knobs, uh, little like, buttons that were round like balls. There were flowers. And there were cups. And Rashi says these cups were like Kiminkoso Shell Alexandria. They were cups of Alexandria. They were wine goblets. Similar to wine goblets that we have today. They were wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. Now, we understand that that was the cup. They were pointed cups. They weren't round glasses. But also, the Rambam in his illustration, his drawing, draws those cups on the menorah upside down. They weren't right side up. They weren't containers. They were givers, pourers. So once again, the question is why? Why stray from the norm? Everything else is right side up in the world. And generally speaking, mitzvahs that we do are meant to be right side up. Like even in the Mishkan itself, in the tabernacle itself, the walls of the Mishkan had to be built with wood and they had to be set in the ground with a root at the bottom and a tip at the top. Why this inversion of the cups? Says the Rebbe, because this is the message of the menorah. The inverted cups also are a message. Cups function in two ways. They're both receivers, containers, and givers, pourers, deliverers. So in the first, at first, the cup is wide at the top. This cup is wide at the top, narrow at the bottom. It's upright, representing our, and our, our studying, our absorbing information. We're meant to learn Torah in abundance, learn a lot, so that we should be able to share. And then comes the sharing. Then the menorah's purpose was to share, to illuminate the world, to share God's messages and light and warmth to the rest of the world. And therefore the cups were turned over, were overturned, representing that we're here to give, to share, not just to take, but not just to give a little bit. Wide at the bottom represents giving in abundance, boundless giving, breaking through barriers, transcending all of our natural limitations and giving more and more and more. And the Rebbe says that this is in contrast to the other mitzvahs. Other mitzvahs are, can, are bring God into this world. The mitzvah of the menorah is for us to share God with the world and to do it in a, in a supernatural way, in an abundance, in a, in a boundless way. The Rebbe says this is similar to the windows in the temple in the mikdash. Usually, windows in the olden days, they would be narrow on the outside, a small hole on the outside, but wide and the walls were thick, something like this. The walls were thick, so they would widen as they go inside to spread the light to the farthest reaches of the room. The, wall, the, mirror, the windows in the Beit HaMikdash, in the Holy Temple, were the opposite. They were narrow on the inside, wide on the outside, because their purpose was to spread God's light out to the world, not to take from the outside in, but to bring from the inside out. So here we have the, this is the shape of the menorah and the design within the menorah. We have two lessons from these uh, revolutionary or different approaches that the Rebbe teaches us. That Number one, the message of the menorah is to... Okay, went offline for a minute, but the message of the menorah, says the Rebbe, is that using the correct the correct design of the menorah, not the rounded features the way they were in the Arch of Titus, in the Ark of Titus, which represent negative things for the Jewish people, but we should use the Rambam's correct depiction of the menorah, which represents that we are a beacon of light and strength and warmth and illumination to the nations 
and the overturned cup representing our abundance and our sharing that with the world until the world is illuminated with the light of Mashiach may happen soon. That is the story of the menorah. There's a lot more in Truma. If you're still there, I'll just throw in one more cute little vertel. Parshas Truma starts off with the Yikhuli Truma. Speak to the Jewish people and they should take from me donations. Bring their donations. Doesn't say for what. First. First it says give. Take donations. And then it goes on. It says, oh, this is what you should bring and this is what it's for. It's exactly opposite of the way we usually work. Somebody wants to encourage somebody to bring, to give. And say, hey, I have this project, I have this program, I have this plan, I have this beautiful idea. It's fascinating, it's fabulous. It'll benefit the world, it'll benefit humanity, it'll benefit you, it'll benefit everyone. But then you talk about perhaps you'd like to partner with it, etc. This is the exact opposite. God is saying, speak to the Jewish people, tell them to give. For what? What? For what? How much? Just give. A Jew is a giver. As the Torah is teaching us, a Jew gives. We are the most generous, philanthropic, and generous-minded and spirited people in the world. A Jew is a giver. God bless you. Take care.